What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are here for the Madden 24 rebuild of the Green Bay Packers. A very interesting roster, which I was like, you know, who should I rebuild next? Who is the most interesting? Maybe not necessarily all out rebuild, but maybe in that little bit of a purgatory. I don't know. And I think Green Bay fits that bill perfectly because they have some known commodities, they have some upside players, they have a lot of question marks. Starting the offense, no commodities. Aaron Jones, when healthy, is great. David Bakhtiari, when healthy, is great. Elton Jenkins is a really nice player. The I don't knows. It's like, well, is Christian Watson a guy? Is Christian Watson a guy that was just got hot for a couple games with Aaron Rodgers last year? And he's height, weight, speed, not really refined? Kind of, yeah, but he does have a dev trait. And that always kind of works in Madden. You have Jalen Reed, the rookie, pulled a hidden dev. We, uh, we got gold in training camp to bring him up to a 75, so you know, off of his base 74. You have Romeo Dobbs, who's made some splash plays here and there, both with Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. You have Luke Musgrave, very talented tight end prospect, but barely played football at Oregon State, and you're more so just gambling on the athletic upside. Obviously, in our Pink Slips franchise, Luke Musgrave is our starting tight end, and he has been a monster. I mean, and then you got the right-hand side of the offensive line. Guys with some upside, I could see them, all three of them, going the full five years. I can see, really see this whole offensive line going the full five years of this rebuild and developing into one of the better units in the NFL. But you have A.J. Dillon, where, you know, kind of surplus for Carb, not going to lie, probably going to throw him up on the trade block. You have Jordan Love, who has shown some ups and downs throughout his first true year as the successor to Aaron Rodgers. Um, I think... I think he'll put it together. I think when you look at a lot of the tape breaking down the Green Bay Packers this year, it's like it's just an inexperienced offense, and you're going to have those growing pains. Well, everyone gets on the same page. Maybe Jordan Love could do with, uh, you know, you'd hate to bring it up, but I feel like a Devontae Adams-type wide receiver could elevate Jordan Love. I think every young quarterback needs that wide receiver one. They don't have to be S tier. They don't have to be ridiculous, but we've seen it time and time and time again. Josh Allen gets Stephon Diggs started going off Jalen Hurts got AJ Brown started going off and you know you look around and you would like to think you know to a lesser extent like that's what the Bears tried to do with DJ Moore and Justin Fields and when they've been out there they've had a couple huge games together but I, I think that is something we may try to chase here in this year but I don't know necessarily what wide receiver I'd want to target but I think if, like, it's not working out, I think if Christian Watson, Reed, and Romeo Dobbs, are, we're not really getting the numbers we're looking for. I think that is my my game plan. I want to try to trade for a wide receiver one, try to find a disgruntled wide receiver one. Literally, I could not throw a name at you guys at the top of my head. But I, I maybe I'll be aggressive there. A lot of times in these rebuilds, I'll be aggressive in we find a guy at the top of the draft board, we're picking in the teens and the 20s, and I'll package a bunch of picks to go up and get that wide receiver. And I'm, hey, maybe we'll get a perfect roll like that and we'll get someone in the draft. But using those assets to go trade up for a high draft pick, I could also just use those draft assets to go trade for a proven player in the league, maybe on an expiring contract. And I think for the Green Bay Packers, a wide receiver could fit that bill. But I definitely think on the offense, maybe I'll throw A.J. Dillon on the trade block, just see what kind of value guy it can get there. Because we don't really need, you know, two running backs. At least at, at that value, knowing A.J. Dillon might have some value to a team that wants to look for a power back. On the defensive side, well, Devontae White had a dev trait last year. He doesn't have any more. That's kind of a bummer because, you know, high upside player uh, from Georgia. You got Kenny Clark moved off of nose tackle. Now he's playing defensive end. Okay. Uh, Rashawn Gary just got paid. I actually don't know if his contract is updated in the roster or not. I don't think think it is so it's likely going to come on us to extend him it is okay well he got like what like a hundred million dollars something crazy like that but uh worth it he's like one of those guys that like trust me the football nerd say he's a lot better than his stats indicate so you kind of almost got to trust him a little bit devondre campbell and quay walker campbell's a little bit older quay walker is definitely going to hopefully eventually develop and emerge as a leader of this defense. I think Preston Smith also is going to go on the trade block. You have first-round pick Lucas Van Ness, who we don't really want to rot away on the bench. Uh, we want to get on the field as soon as possible, so we can put him on the other side of Rashawn Gary, which makes Preston Smith surplus requirement. Darnell Savage, I liked him a lot coming out of Maryland. I don't think he's necessarily popped off or lived up to expectations for the Green Bay Packers. However, this is Madden, not real life. And because I am a fan of Darnell Savage, we're going to give an opportunity. Plus, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers here. We don't have a lot of talent in the pipeline here. 
that could succeed him, that could make us want to trade off of him uh, in this rebuild. So we're going to have to hope that Darnell Savage continues to develop. And then looking at the corner room, you know, Elite in Jair Alexander, 93 X Factor. I think Eric Stokes um, is, is slowly starting to put it all together, 77 with a dev trade. But beyond that, that third corner spot, uh, you got Rochelle, you got Nixon, who's like more of a return man, special teamer. We're going to need a little bit of TLC, I think. I think we're going to need to look at upgrading potentially Rudy Ford. I like Rudy Ford. He was a beast here in Philly, I believe. He, yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah, there was a close, or he actually made the Pro Bowl for the Eagles as a special teamer. Uh, and he's made the most of his starting reps there with the Green Bay Packers. But 28 normal dev, he's pretty much at his ceiling. So when you look at, like, where do we need to go? How can we put this all in place? One is we definitely need to get Jordan Love off of that normal dev trade. Two, do we need a X factor, not necessarily an X factor, but like a, an X factor at wide receiver. Do we need that game changer that can help Jordan Love elevate his game? Or are we going to be able to develop Watson, Reed, and Dobbs to be that, that trio that could be a monster also can throw Musgrave in the mix? Defensively, we need some DBs. I think getting a long-term successor at strong safety, bringing in that nickel corner is going to be important. Definitely should be exploring a nose tackle market. Luckily, nose tackle is particularly easy to find in Madden generated draft classes, so I'm not overly worried about that. And hopefully we can get decent value here in, in terms of Preston Smith and A.J. Dillon as far as trade offers are concerned. Now, before we go any further, uh, just because, just quick update, I really want, number one thing I want to do, and I, I've literally taken days off of making content to work on my draft class, I want to do realistic rebuilds. And Bengal is working xbox next gen on 2024 i'm working on xbox next gen 2025 uh, i'm a little bit ahead of him i, I would say from the south things he's he's done like quarterbacks running backs some wide receivers and uh he doesn't do the full draft classes he just does the draftable players which is perfectly fine my draft class i'm doing literally every single player is going to be a real player uh and i need to kind of work off of him because we want to make these draft classes interchangeable so you can use his and mine every single time if you want to which means I gotta make sure there's no dupes. And there's already been a couple like underclassmen that he may put in his class that I gotta yank out of mine. So there need, does need to be a little bit of fine tuning there, but hopefully sooner than later, it's going to be there. I think my 2025 class will definitely be done before his by the sounds of things. I still just have to do defensive tackles, defensive ends and linebackers, and then I'm done. So, whoa. Um, yeah, that's, that's literally the alarm to start the rebuild. I'm ahead of schedule. But update on the draft class, it's coming. Because uh, that's the number one thing I want to do. The number one piece of content, I want to do full-on realistic rebuilds. 2024 realistic draft class. 2025 realistic draft class. I want to do that for all 32 teams. But it takes time, man. I literally could not tell you how much time I have sunk into creating that draft class. I, I'm going to say I'm probably into like at least 20 hours. 20 hours total. And I'm not even done. Like It's probably going to go well over 24. Like one full day of working on the draft class so it's taking its time but when it comes out it'll be worth it trust me so that's just a little update then now let's get into the rebuild of the green bay packers and let's start by seeing what kind of market exists for aj Dillon and preston smith so we were able to find a trade partner and it was the la rams so we package dealed aj Dillon and preston smith and we got a fourth round pick and jordan fuller who while rudy ford is not bad enough that we have to upgrade him right away fuller is only what two overall points worse four years younger and has a star dev. Gotta do what you gotta do. Oh yeah, not my last trade. I thought, like, before the league got crazy with, like, the CPU resigning players and, you know, it's not ideal, right? It's the dumb things can happen. I was like, what player, what, who's a wide receiver one that could be available right now? Obviously, it's past the trade deadline, but I think a lot of eyes go towards T. Higgins. Outside of, like, going through the bringing Devontae Adams back because he's not happy that they got rid of Derek Carr and all that stuff in Vegas. I do not see a way that the Bengals can afford to pay T. Higgins. He's going to want wide receiver one money. He probably wants to become a wide receiver one that he's never going to be uh, in in Cincinnati. So while he's here, 85 superstar. I I think I I don't know I, I think this is a fair trade. I don't I don't. It's either a fair trade or I slightly overpaid. I gave them our first round pick, which we're probably not a playoff team, so that's going to be a pick that's closer to 10 than it's not. We gave them our third round pick this year and a fourth round pick this year. We still have two seconds and a third. So it's not like we completely punt it on this first draft. I gave them Romeo Dobbs, who's 77, 24 years old. No dev trader or anything. 
but 77 normal dev. And their biggest need is tackle. I have Zach Tom, who I do right now. He plays behind Bakhtiari if everyone's healthy. I slid him over to right tackle. He is 24 years old, 77. So that is a guy that, say, within a five-year period, he, I was planning on him being my, I want to say, franchise right tackle. But I was planning on Zach Tom. Like, he is a ceiling within the next five years, probably being 83, 84, 85, which is, you know, a borderline top 10 right tackle. Tackle protecting Joe Burrow is the biggest need. That was what I had to add. I tried doing it for Dobbs, a first, third, and fourth. Would not get it across the line. As soon as I threw in a guy that's an instant upgrade at tackle for the Bengals long term, both Dobbs and Tom are on rookie contracts for the next two, three years. So it's also cost effective. Uh, it works out for both teams because we get ourselves a wide receiver one that can absolutely elevate Jordan Love. And coming off a week, a 28-7 victory over the Minnesota Vikings in which Jordan Love, with 300 yards and three passing tutties, gets player of the week. We get some breakouts, and Jordan Love's been playing well. Well, that's the second time he's got player of the week. Aaron Jones has got it as well. We're 5-2. and two. We have a pro, like, just incredible offense and defense. We have the number one offense in the NFL right now as far as points per game. Uh, I guess overall, though, the number three offense, number one defense. Um, yeah, uh, you're not going to get a lot better. But year one! Year one! So we got a breakout wide receiver and defensive back. No breakout for Jordan Love. He's still on that normal dead. But the way that he's playing, uh, I think he might have a shot. Uh, so we have Jaden Reed, the rookie, looking to jump. I assume he's a star dev. So he's looking to make that jump to superstar dev. And we have a breakout defensive back. And it is Jordan Fuller! Who we traded for from the Rams. Giving up our surplus requirement. Giving the Rams a new running back one. And a veteran pass rush. And Preston Smith. Jordan Fuller comes here. And is thriving in Green Bay. And a chance to become a superstar dev. Against the 1-7 Rams. Let's beat him up. And then after that go to the win. And do some contract negotiations. Where I'm assuming we're going to have to pay Rashawn Gary a whole lot of money. So first up was Jaden Reed. Unfortunately. I mean that's a tough ask. Especially with him being wide receiver 3 behind Christian Watson, and T. Higgins. I'm a lot more optimistic with Jordan Fuller. All right. Double whammy of disappointment. But at least we won the game, right? We didn't lose. It was close. 24-17, but we handled business. So let's take a look at some contracts here for this outstanding... There's no way that I can... If I can... So we're going to pay for Sean Gary. We don't have any money. I was going to be terrified there if I traded for T. Higgins. So we're going to be able to pay for Sean Gary and T. Higgins. I'm going to try to keep Jordan Fuller. I didn't just trade for him, but that is going to be, you know, Savage is a starter. Runyon. Savage and Runyon were two guys I thought we were going to be able to rely on long term. Now we might get some additional salary cap at the end of the season. Maybe we can get some breathing room by releasing a couple guys because I really want those guys on the squad but we have to we have to get Higgins and Rashad Gary locked up with the remaining three million bucks so it only cost us like 500 grand extra each way to get Rashad Gary to sign now we got to get Mr. Higgins, which I think he was close okay yes yes we spent an upgrade here for Tiggins. Man, this team, I don't know what the combination is. I don't know literally if T. Higgins is single-handedly upgrading the squad. We just beat the Chiefs in the sim to go to 9-3. and three. We have maintained the number one offense in an elite defense. Like, it wasn't like we just got hot and we're starting to collapse in the back end of the season. This has been insane. Like, Green Bay, I've seen a couple... You know, through it, all the different rebuilds we've done so far at Madden 24. A couple years of Green Bay's competitive. They are a team that is somewhat common, making the playoffs. Maybe a Super Bowl here and there sprinkled in. But generally speaking, not this good. Well, the bad news, the win streak ends. We lose 31-21 to the Giants. We should probably beat him, but we did get a breakout scenario. And I'm hoping, oh, it's Slayton. I was kind of hoping it was Devontae White to get back to Superstar. But the Gator in me, TJ Slayton. You know, if we can develop him as a nose tackle for us, a star dev will certainly go a long way. I don't know if he's a 70 yet. He's probably just right on the line of being a 70 overall. But again, dev trait definitely makes his outlook a little bit better. As we beat the Bucks week 15, 24 21, and we get the dev trait for Slayton. Let's go, Gators.
And this is just kind of fun. We got to see this live. We get back on a little bit of a winning ways here. We go to 12 and 4. We have a chance to make the Bears 0 and 17. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if we don't win this one. We should be 13 and 4, which is definitely ahead of expectations, better than any Packer fan could. Yes, and we kick the living shit out of the Bears as they go 0 and 7. That is the first, maybe second. I'm going to say first. 0 and 17 sim that I have seen. How did they manage to do that? They had the second worst offense, easily by over 100 points, the worst defense in the league. I have, it has been a very long, and they're not that bad. Bears usually seem decent. Wow. Per, I mean, if you're watching this as a Packer fan, just added value. Oh, they're actually like, they played the Green Bay Packers, traded for a wide receiver, which I've been screaming at them for to do. Jordan Love succeeded Aaron Rodgers not a crazy amount of passing yards but I'll take the four touchdowns every day of the week and I'm going to be absolutely shocked I don't think Jordan Love had like MVP type numbers as we look at he's not in the top three but he played pretty well Aaron Jones leading running back rushing numbers across the board very good for him um all right uh we made the playoffs we got the nine and eight New Orleans Saints I think at 13 and four I think winning the NFC North we are not going to want to be one and done. I think expectations, almost any other scenario, like we squeaked in the playoffs, I'd be like, all right, well, that's good enough. But I think with how we played this year, the fact that we have the number two, we lost the number one offense, we finished with the number two offense, number two defense, we're, we're going to have to at least get one win. So Jordan Love finishes with 4,100 yards, 36 touchdowns. Now, it's not ridiculous to assume, because, you know, there is a, a level of playbooks in Madden and... If Jordan Love can play well, you know, you think Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, they would put up big numbers in the sim last year. This is the same. Everything It's just different players, lower rated players. So if you can get them firing all cylinders, the ceiling for Green Bay to be a very good offense in Madden 24 is absolutely there. That's a good year for Jordan. I'd like to see maybe the interceptions, you know, get that into single digits. But that is outstanding. And I think that would be a dream. There's obviously no way you can hit that in real life right now. But that's big time him, especially... For getting off that normal depth. That should absolutely yield him a dev trait increase up to a star. Aaron Jones had the most rushing yards in the NFL. Uh, 15 touchdowns. Jordan Love also had five rushing touchdowns. 277 yards. Now this is something that, you know, when we traded A.J. Dillon, I think we're answering another, I don't know if that's a question, but like solving a problem that Green Bay Packer fans seem to have. It's like, you got to feed Aaron Jones. I know he's availability and he's sometimes he's banged up, but like it does feel like they... They try to have too much of a committee in their backfield when is clearly Aaron Jones is the most talented running back in that team, and he's one of the best running backs in the NFL, and maybe he's just not getting enough opportunities. That is exactly what we gave him here, though, by trading away A.J. Dillon, and look at what he rewarded us with, the leading rusher in the NFL. T. Higgins went off 100. He's not even in the slot. That is outside wide receiver number. Jaden Reed, the rookie's in the slot. He went for 1,000. Watson, 875, but he had double-digit touchdowns with 11 uh, I mean, if I had to be nitpicky, maybe a little bit more of Aaron Jones out the backfield to be realistic because he does he is a weapon out of the backfield. And if he would have finished with three, 400 yards, uh, giving some a wicks. But look at that. T. Higgins on the outside, 102 catches, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Absolutely worth the trade, worth the price of admission to bring him here from the Bengals. Devondre Campbell over 100 tackles. For a 3-4 defense, the sacks, you will love to see it. 12 sacks for Sean Gary, 11 from Kenny Clark. Uh, three picks, Jair Alexander leading the secondary. Two for Fuller, two for Eric Stokes. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad at all. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. Jordan Love just making it. He knows Aaron Rodgers by one slot there at number eight in the MVP of voting. Offensive player of the year. Uh, we have Aaron Jones and Jordan Love both making that short list. Defensive player of the year, nothing Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jaden Reed, runner-up. I would have loved to see him get that award. Tough competition with Bijan Robinson in the conference. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jalen Carter, who's an absolute monster. Uh, no issues with that. Jordan Love makes top five for quarterback. I don't know how. We have the year Aaron Jones has first in rushing. I mean, obviously, it's the touchdowns. These guys probably had close to 20, but still fourth. Come on, man. Uh, T. Higgins, third wide receiver. Watson down there as well. Oh, that's pretty sure. Oh, there we go. An award winner, Rashad Gary. Would be cool for him to go up to X Factor, considering we just paid him a lot of money and we're not going to have very much salary cap, I don't think. But 
It all comes down to this, man. I don't want to be one and done. Give me at least one playoff victory. Everything else in my mind will be house money given the year that we had. If we go 0 and 1, that'd be brutal, but we, we don't even need to think about the negatives as we win 20 to 14. And in that performance, Rashawn Gary with two sacks gets defensive player of the week as the Green Bay Packers are moving on to the division round to take on a very good 49ers team, the one seed. Come on. Shock the world. That shocked the world. It's Brock Purdy. He's not that. And in an all-time ugly game, 10-7. I mean, it's probably better doing that than losing to Dallas in the championship. 10-7. Neither quarterback did anything. CMC was slightly better than Aaron Jones defensively. Yeah, there you go. Two and, I mean, the pressures. Look at that. Five sacks to half a sack. Five sacks to one sack. That is what happened. CMC and more pra more pressure for the 49ers. But again, different area coach. Niners are the top. Niners are expected to be competing for the Super Bowl. We're in Green Bay. It was kind of like a limbo of like, well, hopefully Jordan Love's good. If not, we might need to have a little blow up on this team and, and, and dump some guys and, and can, you know rebuild this team to absolute contender. Shock, shockingly good. Absolutely shockingly good. Number two offense, number two defense in year one. Now, let's maintain it. Let's not just be a flash in a pan. I don't need to be number two every single year. But I would say right now, this is the pace that we're setting. I don't want to be worse than top ten from here on out offensively and defensively. And as the Niners defeat the Ravens 38-16, to let's look at the more anticipated news. What dev trades did we get on the offense and defensive side of the ball? Offensively, Jordan Love goes from normal to star. Aaron Jones goes from superstar to X-Factor. And T. Higgins, I thought he had, you know, I think it's the fact that he had over 100 catches. He got, like, everything you want. Over 100 catches, over 1,000 yards, over 10 touchdowns. And what a trade. First what was it a first, third, fourth, Romeo Dobbs and Zach Tom at tackle? Yes, you know, we had a little bit of downgraded tackle, but to get an X Factor wide receiver, gigantic for this squad going forward. On the defensive side, four dev traits. Obviously, Slayton hit his in season. Um, and I don't think anyone went up or down, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take a push. We've got $15 million of remaining funds. Um, okay. Do any of you guys want to stay? Okay, I guess I'll go uh, F myself then. So what I am going to do here, at least before we go to free agency, I think Elton Jenkins, because he can play everywhere on the line, he's just a lot more valuable to us at right tackle than he is at guard. Plus we have Royce Newman here, so uh, 71, you know, decent enough starter. We got Ryan there starting as well. Do want to prioritize trying to find, you know, an interior lineman during this draft. But if not, I think we could survive with what we have. So in free agency, I threw it off for here. Ooh, we might, I guess. Uh, we need a new safety to replace Darnell Savage after he stuck his middle finger up at us, which I did not take kindly. So I'm going to bring in Jeremy Chin. We're going to convert him to safety. He's going to play back there with Jordan Fuller. We didn't have a first round pick, but we have picked 22 and 27 in the second round, which as soon as I noticed that, uh, it gave me a little bit of confidence to be aggressive and go out and make that trade. And we ended up, we need interior linemen. I think we can go defensive line. I think we can go BPA, honestly, on the defensive side of the ball. We have Dakota Richardson here at guard. Three Bs and an A. I wish the bench press was a little bit higher, but he looks pretty good. He looks passable. He looks draftable. I got Elliot Beard at center, but at 6'1", 315, I think he would also go play guard. Three As and a B. Elite acceleration agility. I think, look, first place and everything. I think that is for sure going to be one of our picks. There is a gigantic defensive tackle here in Robert Walton. 6'4", 397 pounds. He looks pretty good as well. Like We could very easily get that guard and this D tackle here. Um, but also, I mean, look at this guy. Damian Bonds. A, oh, he has A power. Even better stats. 358. Okay. There's not much cheese at corner. Corner is a spot that we could look at adding a third corner for sure. Nickel corner wasn't he? The best one here is Justin Scott, 6'4", 
Six two. Now don't if he's like a four three guy, that makes it okay. He's a four three guy. That makes it a little interesting. Uh, I want all of them to be honest with you, uh, but I think it's probably it's fair to say because Slayton went up dev trade. Even though these guys both look pretty awesome, Slayton did go up dev. Um, all right, we're gonna go center, and then I'm gonna hopefully grab that corner. I think those need to be a top. brutal, brutal. And then the corner went off the board. So it kind of makes it an easier decision for us. Now, we still have that guard there. That's where we want it to go. But I, I think I'm more intrigued with the defensive tackles. And I'm more intrigued with the one I didn't scout. The letter grades look pretty good. So we're going to get Damian Bonds. At an, and we can't have nice things. No dev traits. These guys both better be 75 plus. Or I'm going to be pissed. Not the way I wanted to start it out. I would have loved to have a couple hidden dev players to build off of, you know, an okay offseason. We got a Jeremy Chin. But, again, 75s. Give me high ratings. We get 76 to 75. So at least they break that threshold. Uh, Damian Bond, 75. He probably will probably start him, honestly, over Slayton, even though Slayton does have the dev trait. Bond's just easier, younger, quicker to develop. And then Elliot Beard at 76. The plan is to have him go to left guard. It sucks that there's no dev traits because it's highly unlikely he'll ever get like offensive lineman a year to go up a dev trait. But um, moving him to guard, bumps him up an extra spot to 77. I kind of feel like it's just a weak draft class. I need to see the other guys though. Uh, well, congrats on the Bears going oh and whatever. You get two 80s. 0 and 17, and they end up with pick one and two. And they get the two best players in the draft class. Are they both just X-Factors? Ridiculous. They get an X-Factor pass rusher. Congrats. And they get a pick four. Is it an X-Factor wide receiver? Did they get themselves another weapon for Justin Fields? And they got two X-Factors. So I guess that's the price of going 0-17, two X-Factors. Would you do that? If in IRL, would you accept that for your team? Uh, let's look at our picks. I just got to see the other guys. So Justin Scott was the corner that I wanted. 70, I would have been pissed with that pick too, so that's good. Um, and then I got to go see that other D-tackle. The D-tackle I scouted, probably should have went with. Um, oh, he didn't even go. Okay, Richardson was the guy that we thought about. Hidden Dev, brutal. Should have went him instead of the center. And then where's our gigantic nose tackle? Robert Walton. Of course. Of course. I literally went with the two guys that don't have dev traits. So I guess we had a wake-up call. We're 2-2. Two and two. It's not bad. Not a brutal start, but we did just get our butts kicked. Week 4, 28-0 against the Falcons. So the fall from that is that we get two breakouts. One is for Damian Bonds, our normal dev second-round pick, which is a little bit of a wet fart. Um... I mean, the rating was there. You know, I'm not going to be highly critical, but he has a chance to go off normal up to a start, which would be huge. And then we got Jeremy Chin, our lone free agency signing, back at safety. Signed him as a corner. He's on star, making an attempt to go to superstar against the Dow. I'll take one. I won't be greedy. I'll take one. Ideally, I'll take the D tackle just because he's a little bit younger and Jeremy Chin already has a dev trait. Also, you want to beat Dallas, man. You want to be able to flex your muscles, and we did not do a great job. Falling 35-14, and we're last in the division. But at least we got one dev trade here for Damian Bonds, plus 20,000 XP. So that right there already makes him, you know, ridiculous pick. Uh, and Jeremy Chin, unfortunately, did not. But we need to turn this one around and get out of the basement of the NFC North. Well, we just got crushed. 41-0. Two very ugly losses on our 4-5 and five record here. Um, I mean, top 10 offense, top 10 defense still, but bottom dweller. I mean, let's just go right through this week here and see who truly is the shittiest team in the NFC North this season between us and the Detroit Lions. And apparently it is us, because of course. Um, and we actually had a better offensive and defensive performance in that matchup. All right. Well, yep. definitely, you know, we overachieved last year, this year. It is what it is. All right, so let's look at what we got here. Fifth year options, Quay Walker, and you know that we'll do that later. Uh, we got Bakhtiari left tackle. We'll give him a two year deal. We got Aaron Jones at running back. We'll give him a three year deal. 
Should hold on to his rating pretty well. Um, Kenny Clark. I mean, we should be able to get both these guys here. We get Kenny Clark. Three years. 52 and a half million dollars. And then we got Jordan Love. The love maker himself. Is going to be tight. But there you go. $200 million. You got to bring me a Super Bowl for the next four years, bud. It's probably not happening this year. So in reality, you got three seasons. A two-game win streak and above 500 at 7-6. And, and the NFC North is competitive enough. But, man, look at the Bears laying two X-Factors in the draft. Go from 0-17 to 9-4. We got ourselves a breakout off of this Colts victory. And it is for the nose tackle Bonds again. He is looking to go from disappointing normal dev pick to like 81 superstar by the end of his rookie season. And that's excluding the fact if he's getting this, he might get rookie of the year. But this is always a tough jump. We do handle business. Tough win against the Seahawks. 20 to 14, week 15. I would love to just see Bonds continue to crush it. Holy shit. We got ourselves an absolute stud. So, I mean, he started as a 76 normal. And there's a shot. We I don't even know. 85 when all is said and done. But what a monster on the inside. He is thriving with Kenny Clark and Devontae Wyatt on that front three. And we go to year two, and I'm not I'm not overly dis I'm disappointed, obviously, from where we were last year, but last year we just struck gold. This year, probably more in line with where we should be as a squad. Nine and eight, and it's just the NFC North super competitive, using nine and eight. Gets you in contention for a wild card spot. Uh, we finish, though, look at that, top five offense, defense, probably pretty close to top ten. So, you know, it's not really like we regressed and fell off a cliff there, I don't think. Jordan Love, still a decent season, 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns. Interceptions a little high, though, 17. A little rich for my blood, need to figure that out. Uh, Aaron Jones continues to be an absolute monster, 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns. A little less than a Jordan Love, I think he had like five, six rushing touchdowns last year. Um... So that's just, you know, a little step back for him. T. Higgins, though, continues to just be awesome return on investment. 87 catches, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns for our X-Factor wide receiver. We got 1,000 for Watson, 7 and 8 for Jaden Reed. Respectable numbers for Luke Musgrave. Defensively, both Campbell and Walker go over 100 tackles. Our sacks dropped off a little bit. Nine and a half sacks for Sean Gary, but 20 TFLs, six sacks for a 360-pound nose tackle is absurd. There's no other way to put it. Jair with seven picks. That is absurd. MVP goes to Mahomes. Let's just see if we got any Packer winners. Aaron Jones made top five there. Uh, oh, what? Come on, man. We're looking for the complete year. I got to go see what that guy did. We got DB of the year, Jair. Rashawn Gary gets linebacker of the year. I got to go see what this Vikings guy. I'm going to guess linebacker. We got Sam Darnold on his. Ugh. 3,000 yard receivers, though. Congrats. So who the hell? This guy. 17 TF, 17 TFLs, 10 sacks out of Memphis. He is who gets the... I mean, he's on normal dev. It's not a robbery, but I think uh, for what our guy did, eh, maybe put a little more respect on him there. But, unfortunately, year two ends with a competitive season. It wasn't like... Bipolar, where we're like bottom and just nothing makes sense from year one to year two for it. In terms of a drop-off, it was just a really tough division. Obviously, our schedule was a lot harder because of our record last year. Uh, we go back to the drawing board. End of year two, the Eagles win the Super Bowl. Shout out to the Birds. And as far as dev traits are concerned, I'm not expecting really anything. I just want them to maintain. Jordan Love gets superstar. What? I thought for a matter of fact, 17 intercepts. That must have been just under the cutoff. I think that's probably the most interceptions I've seen a QB throw. Without he didn't he have ridiculous? He had good yards and touchdowns, but not even like a ridiculous stuff that I think could compensate for the interceptions. But I ain't gonna complain. Uh, superstar there for the old QB. I uh, thought, yeah, I would say I thought Watson had a shot because he did go over a thousand yards, but obviously that's not enough to for sure guarantee a superstar dev on the defense side. Bonds is up to an X factor. How? Pro Bowl. He made the Pro Bowl. Okay. What a monster, dude. Went from an absolute bummer of a pick. How is he not a dev trade type pick? To And he earned that. It wasn't just like I got a great role. I drafted an X-Factor. We drafted a normal dev that went up to an X-Factor by the end of his rookie season. The bummer is Kenny Clark did lose his superstar. But Rashawn Gary made the jump up to an X-Factor. Jeremy Chin, our lone free agent signing last year, made the jump up to a superstar. That is absolutely a win. This team is going to be a lot stronger going into year three. 
With only $11 million of available funds for free agency, as much as it would be awesome to splurge on a Jalen Waddle, or it's actually a pretty good role for free agency. Um, I didn't even talk about the fact Razul Douglas got traded. Right, literally right before we decided to break the rebuild. Fan of the channel, Razul Douglas. Uh, we just got no money. We're going to have to improve this team in the draft. So we got a decent pick. Kind of the, the good news. Uh, pick 16. Looking at where we need to go. I will just say right now, there was a wide receiver. Looks generational. I got to go check him out after this. Just because of an alternate universe, maybe we don't get T. Higgins and we get that guy. But our, our needs, uh, three options. One is I need a guard. One is what's up with Devontae Wyatt. I picked him as fifth-year option. But is he going to be a long-term play for us at 3-4 defensive end? And we need a slot corner. Uh, so in terms of guards, we have Dexter Sanford here. The clock's running, so we got to hurry up here. Uh, he looks actually pretty good athlete. Might be able to wait to the second round on him. Walt Chandler also looks legit. I did scout him uh, on the defensive line. Some nice options, but I don't want to pull the trigger right away on immediately replacing uh, Devontae Wyatt. And that's going to take us into the secondary, where we got two corners here that look pretty nice. One is Jerome Clark, three Bs and a C. Not the best combine. I'm pretty sure we're going to go with this guy, Jermichael McCoy, because he's built like a slot corner. Double A, double B. Yep, you're our guy. Let's go. Welcome. He's going to be a day one starter for us. Second round, we're going to go with the athlete here in Dexter Stanford, and he is going to be plug and play for us at right guard. We want that 3-4 DN. We got Jalen Barden. 6'1", 289, undersized, double C, double B. Elite acceleration, jumping, great speed. Bench press, not too bad. No devs last year, three devs this year. That's the kind of balance we need. And if this draft class can be anything like the last draft class, we're going to be very happy. Jamichael McCoy at pick 16, 77 hidden dev. That is huge. It's exactly what we need. There's there's no, you know, throwing to the wolves with any worry. We had Dexter Stanford at left guard there. He's going to be a 72. We're going to actually get a slide in the right guard. Thought he'd be a little bit higher, but the dev trait, I'd rather him much be 72 with a dev trait than be 74 normal. Especially on the offensive line because it's so hard for them to go up devs. Uh, we got Jalen Barden, 70, but he actually might go up a little bit. Maybe a point or two if we make him defensive end. So we'll make him a right defensive end. He's going to be direct competition for Devontae White. He actually went down two points. Yikes. Uh, got a 71 running back here in the sixth round. Dante Bernie out of Texas. All in all, a really good class, but I got to go see what this wide receiver was. There was a ridiculous wide receiver. There he goes. He's only 80. That's not that crazy. Going to the Patriots, 6'5", 90 speed, 92 acceleration. Now he's one of these freaks. Uh, let's sneak, let's peek this little dev here, though. Because if I didn't do the TD against trade, this would have been the guy I would have 100% traded multiple draft picks for. And uh, definitely, T. Higgins was the right call. So the midway point of year number three, a little more like year number one, as we are 8-1 and one in the NFC North, not nearly as competitive as the Bears and Lions are back being bottom dwellers. In the division. Now, the bad news for us is we only have $15 million. Unless that number's lying to me, we have no money. So, we got two starters that unless we get an influx at the end of the season, or we get desperate enough that we want to restructure some contracts, we are likely going to be down Stokes and Christian Watson. So, we're going to be down our corner two and wide receiver three. Luckily, Jalen Reed has developed into our wide receiver two and has kind of surpassed Watson. I believe he's a 83 and he's only 25. So... Won't be the end of the world. I'm not going to put ourselves in a really bad situation to try to get these guys both across the line. But ideally, we do get a little bit of money. Can get one of them. And I'd probably pick Eric Stokes, honestly. And year three comes to an end. We got the Eagles. So defending Super Bowl champions in the first round. We go 13-4. We get our second NFC North title in three years, which is all you can really ask for. We finish with a seventh-ranked offense just outside the top ten defense. So pretty positive numbers. I'd love to see just for Jordan Love. The interceptions cut down. He threw for the second most passing touchdowns in the league, and he cut his interceptions. They straight up just got rid of 10. I think he had 17 last year. So he's playing like a superstar. That is awesome. Aaron Jones doesn't show any signs of slowing down, continues just to be a workhorse. T. Higgins had an outstanding year 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, eight and four for Watson, eight and nine for Jaden Reed. So you're kind of seeing, you know, push comes to shove. I don't think it's going to cripple the offense losing Watson. I mean, someone like Musgrave can step up. But again, ideally, we do get enough money that we can get both Stokes and Watson signed uh, for the offseason. But I'm just not getting my hopes up. going to be a realist about it. Can't pay everybody. Quay Walker goes over 100 tackles. We got 11 sacks for Sean Gary. Eight from Lucas Van Ness getting his first real opportunity to start at pass rush. Six and a half sacks. 14 TFL. Still ridiculous numbers for a nose tackle. Maybe not ridiculous, but very good numbers for a nose tackle. Uh, Jair with seven picks last year, four picks this year. 
That's pretty good. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson with Jordan Love making the top 10. Honorable mention. And peeking for some outright Green Bay Packers here. Rashawn Gary. Man, Rashawn Gary just crushing it. Lucas Van I would actually like Van Ness to win it because Gary's on his X Factor. Van Ness stuck on star. If he would have won that, likely would have bumped up to a superstar. But I digress. Year three playoff run. Very tough matchup. Right out the gate here against A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, and the Philadelphia Eagles. But we're also a legitimate squad, and we lose a close one. 31-28, one and done. And that was an opportunity, man, because this is a playoff where the Chiefs didn't make it to the second round. The Dallas Cowboys straight up didn't make it. That You can't get a lot better role than that. It's not on Jordan Love either. He played well. 250 yards, three touchdowns. Did have a pick. Uh, they ran the ball pretty well. Though, that's, yeah, that's tough. T. Higgins had a game. Jaden Reed had a game. He's going to need to step up if we can't bring back Watson. Uh, Jalen Carter kind of took it over there. Two sacks for him. Damn, it's a close one. Two really good teams. We still got two more years. I'm not hitting the panic button just yet. At the end of the year, man, the Ravens have gone deep like every freaking playoffs. Um, congrats. Do we have any retirements? Just because we have a little bit of salary cap. Always a little suspect that it is Bakhtiari, and it is Bakhtiari, so... Great. Good news is that I likely can sign both Stokes and Watson. The bad news is we lost one of the best left tackles in the NFL, which is a bummer. Uh, look at our squad for depth trades real quickly before we can handle some contracts on the off. Yeah. X Factor for Jordan Love. Let's freaking go. I don't really know how. I mean, it just must have got off. I mean, he was second in touchdowns, I suppose. Uh, yards were top 10. Stanford was a hit and dev guard. He popped as a star. But yeah, looking at the offense here. I mean, we could survive. I mean, we need a center. We need a left tackle. Surprised Musgrave hasn't got off that normal dev trait yet. Uh, but Jordan Love being an X-Factor. Having this trio of X-Factors is huge for the offense. Uh, on the defensive side, we have ooh, McCoy. And he wasn't always. He must have just got that because he was a star dev. He did go up. I don't know how or why he went up superstar. How? He did not have a good, crazy year by any means whatsoever. Uh, not going to criticize, though. Not going to criticize one damn bit. Shout out to you. Because I need it. Um, Quay Walker makes the jump from star up to superstar. We did lose a superstar on Jeremy Chin. But all in all, man, we're still we're still going we're still going strong. We're still in a good spot. We're going to start by picking up the fifth-year option for Lucas Van Ness. We got Eric Stokes, who wants to stay here. We'll give him a three-year deal locked in. $18 million remaining. Uh, hey, we get Christian Watson to sign on the dotted line. Unfortunately, though, with $10 million remaining, highly unlikely we can get a center. We might be able to get a center, but unlikely we'll get a center and tackle, which are really our two big, big needs going into this offseason. Not really a center or tackle. That I mean, there is some tackles, but nothing that we can afford. Um, at least I don't think we can afford it. Come on, pick the good guy. I mean, there's no way. We just got to punch. Yeah, so yeah, we got to go to the draft. Tackle center. A little worried. All right, so starting the draft, I love it when there's two guys I kind of want. One, top on our board here is Todd Cunningham at center. This is a guy that, you know, he's going to follow the second round. I'm going to trade up and be aggressive and get him in the second round. Uh, we do need a tackle. And I got Nick Livingston. He's probably the best overall lineman that could kick the tackle at 6'4", 330. Uh, we also scouted Joel Kramer, but I think he's going to be gone off the board long before we can pick. But, you know, usually first-round projected tackles are going to be fine. Like, these are probably a bunch of guys that are between, like, 70 and 73, 74. So I think we go tackle and or that guard, and i got to make sure I get that center in the second round. So let's see what we got here. Pick 23. Who is still available? Who is going to be our David Bakhtiari replacement? And, uh, all right, we should go with, like, the best athlete here. What do we got? Lennox Tucker, 6'8", 320, elite change it. Okay, I'm already sold on him. We got uh, Lawrence, who has B run block. Don't really know much else. Pretty good athlete. Justin Henson, have a little bit of scouting here. Double A on the two least important attributes, but good strength, good acceleration. Pretty good athlete. Manny Benedict, 6'6", 307. Ugh. Uh, what do we got? Paul Holloway. 
I mean, now we're getting to the second round. All right, we are going to go with Lennox Tucker. This is your David Bakhtiari. Oh, no, Dev. Eh. All right, made a trade here. We got the second pick in the second round. It cost us two, three, and four. I, my draft board is kind of non-existent after this. And we are going to be able, with this selection, to go grab our new starting center. Mr. Cunningham better be a dev trait. And he does. And take a look at our haul. Lennox Tucker, knowing that there's no dev trait there. But 74, pretty good starting point. And then we have Cunningham, 75 with the dev trait. What's up, kitty? Eh, we'll take it. They both capable to start day one. So here's our squad quick update going into year four. We have Cunningham and Tucker getting the start. Uh, that's that's really all we needed. Uh, we were able to re-sign Christian Watson. A little word that that you know, wide receiver three spot had to get short up, but we we did good job handling business there. The weakness. There's not one weakness. We absolutely should be pushing here in year four for our third divisional title and a deep playoff run. Anyway, year four, undefeated city atop the north, looking to defend our title. At least divisional title, that is. Looking at our contracts, guys that are going to go to the full release is going to be expensive, but I think we got enough wiggle room to keep everybody. We got first up Jair Alexander. This is going to be expensive, but we got him on a two year. How he wants to be. We got Quay Walker. The interest is already there, so I don't need to go pay a whole lot more. $51 million is a lot for an off ball linebacker. We'll get it done. Jaden Reed. Been really, really solid for us uh, this rebuild, so I want to keep him. We got Jordan Fuller. We traded for year one. Give him a player-friendly deal. Man, just just cross the names off. Player-friendly for Elton Jenkins. Ooh, it's going to get a little tight. Okay. So we got 15 mil. I mean, Wyatt can, get, can go for sure. We got 15 mil to get... So we're... If we get a little bit extra, we should have enough money that we can splurge on one free agent that could bring us to a year five Super Bowl bust, get this team over the hump. But uh, we'll definitely get Elton Jenkins over the line first. Oh my God, we went 16 and we've seen it 0 17 for the Bears. We go 16 and 1. Who the hell was the one? The Saints? What? And they didn't. Why? How did they beat us? Carl Granderson went off, I guess. Hmm. All right. I don't how have we got a 17 to know yet? Someone with a better memory than me might remember. I don't think. 16 to 1, pretty good. So we end up getting our third divisional title in four years. So a stronghold on the division. Uh, taking a look at the stats. Jordan Love, you know, stellar as always. 4,000 yards passing, 36 touchdowns to three picks. Aaron Jones, no signs of slowing down. Jaden Reed steps up as wide receiver one. Interesting. T. Higgins doesn't break a thousand, so maybe a little worried he could lose his X Factor, but not a brutal season. Uh, defensively, Quay Walker, real nice year. 12 and a half sacks, Van Ness, 11 and a half, Kenny Clark, 10 and a half for Sean Gary, 8 from Bond, so our defensive front is crushing it. Jair Alexander is one of the best ball hawks in the NFL. We got MVP there going to Jalen Hurts with Jordan Love. He's getting close. He's almost top five. Quickly looking for some Packers here. Ooh, there we go. That could be huge. Van Ness gets linebacker. He's been on a star dev. That could propel him up to a superstar. Somehow Kevin Byard beats Jair Alexander. I hope Byard starts playing like that in real life. But year four, man, we need to start like going on a run. Like this year here, I'd like to see, you know, let's feature in the NFC Championship game. I don't know if that's too much to ask, but going 16-1. and one, uh, would be incredibly disappointing to be one and done. We're gonna, we can't, we just fucking pull the Dallas Cowboy, lose one point to the Bucks. 16 and one, what was it for? Absolutely nothing. We lose to Zach Wilson and the Bucks. Chargers end up beating the Bucks in the Super Bowl, so good. Don't want to see Tampa Bay beat us, go on and win it all in like some sort of Cinderella run. Uh, look at our squad. The good news, Tegans did not lose his superstar. Cunningham. The rookie hitted dev setter is superstar. Nice. Jaden Reed gets a bump up to superstar. Defensively, uh, I mean, Devondre Campbell's just get up there. He's no dev trade for Van Ness. Maybe a little harsh on that front. But we go into the offseason. We need a 3 4 defensive end, maybe a linebacker, salary cap pending. But I think the offense, that is a, that is a Super Bowl winning offense if I've ever seen one. But because I'm a little worried. I'm going to restructure just about anyone that I can restructure to give us as much money as possible to get this team over the goddamn line here for year five. 
After all the restructurings, we went from having $18 million to 57, which allows us to be aggressive here in top targets. Ronnie Stanley, there's pretty big offers on everybody, so I hope we don't swing and miss. Um, but we are top for a lot of them. And we got all three, so we have a new starting tackle. Ed Oliver's going to kick the defensive end, and a care key's going to be just... I was a little bit more juice than Devondre Campbell at this point in his career. Before our draft, don't need anything. Let's just go see with our first round pick. Can we go find a stud? Who looks the most studly of them all? Mm. Don't see much. A couple nice D tackles there. Ooh. What's this guy look like? Harvey Freeman, double A, double B. Elite Acceleration, Elite Speed. Interested. There's our front runner, unless there's like a ridiculous corner still on the board. Which, I mean, I don't mean. If he has the athletic profile, Lonnie Fox. Nope. We got any safeties? Nope. All right, we're going to just draft this linebacker because he looks pretty damn good. Harvey Freeman, you are our final big pick, and he looks like a stunt. A quick snapshot of our final draft. Couple 70s, but Freeman, 75, hidden depth. Strong way to close it out. Too bad he's going to be special teams ace this year. And here it is, year five, a look at our super team. 92 overall. Steve's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, we done it the right way for the most part. Obviously, we got a couple Hail Mary signings, if you will, going into year five. Doesn't need Ronnie Stanley. Have a capable developmental left tackle there replacing David Bakhtiari. But for the most part, uh, you know, I don't know how much better we can do. We got Jordan Love up to an X Factor. Aaron Jones hasn't regressed too bad. Made the big trade for T. Higgins, who's almost up to a 99x factor. Jaden Reed's developed. We still got Watson here. A lot of homegrown talent on both sides of the football. We straight up gut and developed an X factor nose tackle, who's an absolute monster. We got Ed Oliver now, really completing that front three. Jair's been a beast. Got a superstar corner. I mean, you know, we go 16 1, 1. I'm a little worried. If we didn't win it last year, you know, what's going to make this year any different? Last year was pretty much perfect, and we were still one and fucking done. Then your five, close, very close to the top of the north, but we have a tiebreaker getting our fourth divisional title, but it doesn't matter. We need a Super Bowl. I don't care about divisional titles anymore. But we go 12 and five. We finish the top five offense, number one defense, but a very, very tough match up here in the first round of the playoffs against the Philadelphia Eagles. Take a look at our squad. Jordan Love, ooh, probably his worst year, at least equivalent to like maybe year one. Not particularly good, likely Losing his X Factor off of that. Aaron Jones crushed it again. T. Higgins over 1,000 yards. A little light on the touchdowns. Jaden Reed, nice season. 1,100 yards, 11 tutties. Defensively, Quay Walker, just kind of status quo for 100 tackles. Uh, 10 and a half sacks for Sean Gary. 9 for uh, Kenny Clark. 7 for Ed Oliver. 6 for Bonds. Wow. A little low on the picks there for Jair Alexander. He is getting up there in age a little bit. Yearly awards. Dak Prescott wins the MVP because, of course, he does. No Green Bay Packer award winners. But let's take a look at our career stats, just to where we're at right now, because if we crash over the playoffs, I'm going to be pissed off and probably going to forget to do it. So this five-year rebuild, Jordan Love is at, we'll round that up, to 21,000 yards passing, 167 tutties to 53 picks. Not bad at all. Aaron Jones, 13,000 yards rushing, 121 tutties. Uh, he's been awesome. Probably the most consistent player on the offense. Uh, Tegan's obviously split time between the Bengals and us, 8,700 yards, 61 touchdowns, 5,000 yards, almost 50 touchdowns for Jaden Reed. Definitely above expectations. Uh, Watson was a nice role player, as was Musgrave. On the defensive side, Quay Walker. Obviously, a character he wasn't here for a long time. Uh, 650 tackles for Quay Walker. We got 75 and a half sacks for Rashawn Gary on 87 TFLs. 68 and a half for Kenny Clark. 29 for Van Ness. 26 and a half for the nose tackle Bonds. And a very, very impressive 32 interceptions for Jair Alexander. I... This is a Super Bowl winning rebuild. Like, if we don't win it, this is maybe the best team that we've somehow fallen flat on our face. Every other year, we, we haven't lost a whole lot. Most of our rebuilds have hit. But when they don't hit, there's usually like, oh, we didn't draft particularly well. Our team's actually not that good. They're like an 86, 87 overall. This is a super team. This team needs to be kicking the shit out of teams like we just did to Philadelphia there. And I, you know, if we, I don't know. This this could go down as history as our worst, most disappointing Rebuild in Madden 24 if we can't put it all together and win this one. Get the Niners up next. You know. There's no way. They have the 21st offense, 27th defense. 
If there is such thing as Madden Karma, we paid our dues. We fell flat on our face 16-1. We endured that embarrassment. Let me go and try to at least make a Super Bowl. At least we get NFC Championship against the Carolina Panthers. That is definitely winnable. But in our 28-18 victory over the Niners in the divisional round, that is Bobby Okereke. Eight tackles and an interception. Get himself player of the week. But look at that. Bryce Young, four tutties. He is on fire going into this championship game. Let's hop in and play it just, just in case. We can step in and help get this team to the Super But I will say, if we hop in here, I can't touch the Super Bowl. That will be my one rule. NFC Championship game at Lambeau. Making history. Let's make some goddamn history here. Let's go, J-Love. Opening drive, three points. A little bit of a wet fart there. But our defense, multiple stops already. Bail out the offense. And I'm looking at the wrong side of the field. We are down 17-0. I don't know why I thought I was paying them. But there we go. We get a tud. We get two tuds, down three. Here's where we're coming in. I, I got to at least get us to the Super Bowl. I, how, it's not that early in the morning. Usually I can be like, ah, oh, it's first thing in the morning. I can't believe I just made a blooper thing. I'm the Panthers. Nope, no excuse. It's middle of the day. Just one of them days. Third and inches. And we'll go on the quick. I mean, we got a 91 speed, 92 speed tight end. That's an easy matchup. But because we just hopped in and played... Uh, we are not going to be able to play the Super Bowl. We're going to have to win this Super Bowl organically. All right, this team's fucking cursed. This team fucking cursed. It sucks. Mc... They're never winning a Super Bowl with McFlurry as their head coach. That is unreal. Absolutely unreal. Team this good struggled that heavily to even, like, compete for a Super Bowl. Never even sniffed the Super Bowl. What the fuck? Um, yeah. Uh, we'll be back on the weekend. I got a Commanders rebuild coming this weekend. I think they're the next most interesting team, especially with them selling off at the trade deadline. But this is this is gonna stick with me, man. This is T. Higgins. We made the right moves. We drafted well. We signed well in free agency. Managed the salary cap. And uh, McFlurry here, Matt McFlurry, just he, he don't got that dog in him. Never going to be a Super Bowl champion. Well, until we do the realistic rebuild, that is going to be it for the Green Bay Packers. But yeah, up next, we're going to do the Commanders. But if there's any other team you want to see me rebuild while we're just kind of working on the draft classes to get the realistic rebuilds out to you guys, let me know in the comment section below. If it is your first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Leave a comment. All that good stuff to help with the channel with the YouTube algorithm. The robots love engagements. I would very much appreciate it. That's all I ask for in return. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.